Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. It's Kim here. So today is my Sunday tutorial, but it is Monday. <laughs> so I'm also calling it my Mass Make Monday because I'm going to be making a lot of these. And what I'm going to be making is these little flowers. And I'll just bring them up a little closer for you to see. And they are made with seam binding and some little pearls in the center. So I hope you can see those. They're about uh, three quarters to an inch uh, in diameter. And they're really nice to, to uh, decorate um, and embellish your projects, your tags, your um, journal cards, your journal covers, all kinds of goodies. And I have a, I don't know if you remember the bookmarks I was making uh, last Monday with the tassels. Um, I have a couple here that I'm going to be using for my friendship journals in these blue and uh, mustard colors. And if you can imagine just decorating with a few of these flowers on a card like this, how pretty that looks. Or, um, you know, creating a little cluster up at the top of the tassel or, um, you know, at the top of the, um, bookmark. So there's another option there. Um, they're very easy to make. Uh, I call them my seam binding finger flowers and you'll know why in just a, a second, but I just thought I'd show you that, uh, as a way of how to use them. Um, I'm using seam binding. You could use other, uh, thin ribbons. Uh, this is about a half inch wide. So if you are using a wider ribbon, um, you may have to extend the length. Now this, this is a three inch piece. So the wider your ribbon, the, the more length you need in order to make these. So you can use thin, um, ribbons or thin lace. Uh, I have some here, but I'm not going to do any in lace today. This is quite thick actually. So it would probably need quite a bit in order to make the flower, but it would be very pretty. Um, you could use pieces of, uh, material that you cut down to size. You could have one edge, uh, straight and then fray the other edge so that it'll be a really, uh, fluffy flower. Um, all kinds of things. So just experiment with what you have at home. You know, you might have some lining, like a lining from a dress or a blouse that you can, uh, cut up into strips and use because lining would be the same kind of, uh, weight. And, um, you may have some fraying, but you can always fix that after. Uh, some seam binding comes and it's a little thicker and it's, it's got sizing in it. So it, it doesn't form as nice. Um, there are several ways to fix that. You can, uh, th throw it in the washing machine or throw it in your, your, uh, clean dish water, water and, um, rinse it around a few times, scrunch it up, soften it up a little bit. Um, just just to get it to be a little bit more pliable and then iron it flat again. Um, you can also uh, trim it, which I'm going to show you in a minute as well, uh, or or snip into it so, so that it has a little bit more ply uh, to it and uh, will maneuver a little bit easier. Uh, but to make these flowers today, I'm using seam binding. Now the seam binding, um, again, we're, we're cutting it down to three inch pieces. And I've got lots here on the roll. And this is a great way, you know, sometimes you make a, a, a bow for a tag or, um, or, or any kind of card. And then you've always got these little pieces left over. Don't throw them away. You know me. Um, you can, you can uh, use them to make flowers because all we need is a three inch long piece. So I'm just cutting a few pieces here. And if you want to stop the video and, and go get some supplies, let me give you a quick list of what you need to do it. And you can do them along with me. I'll wait for you. Um, so I'm just going to cut a few of this gold color here. So you need your needle and thread, um, uh, to do the gathering. So always have your thread handy. I like to have a few needles already threaded so that I'm not, uh, wasting your time on, on camera, but also because I like to have them, uh, ready for when I'm, I'm working as well. You need some small, 
uh, pearls or seed beads or little tiny uh, other beads that you might have that you can use to stitch into the center. And before you even start, I, I as I've told you in other videos, um, I'm just going to put a couple in my hand here. Always make sure that your needle can go through the bead completely because sometimes you're doing this and it gets stuck on the eye of the needle and it's very frustrating. So that's the very first thing I do is I check all my needles that I'm working with to make sure if I have a needle that it won't go through, I put that needle aside so that I don't run into a situation where I grab it by mistake because it is so frustrating. But these I've already checked. So that's one of the things you always want to check ahead of time. And then you need your seam binding, uh, your scissors and a ruler to measure. And you also need some type of an acetate or liquid glue. Um, everybody's different. Some of you use Fabri-Tac, some of you use uh, glitter glue. I just use a very inexpensive acetate glue that I, you know, I find at, uh, the craft store or at the uh, dollar store, anything very inexpensive. I don't spend a lot of money on glue. Um, so the first thing we're going to do at, is glue these three inch pieces together. So I put a little tiny dot of glue along the edge and I hope you can see that. It's not very much and don't go worry if you go over and then I fold this over and pinch it. The glue will come out on your fingers. Yes. And so that you have a loop like this. You can see how I folded it over. And I'm going to put these on this side because they will take a few minutes to dry. So that is one of the first things you want to do is have a bunch ready uh, cut and glue them. When I say a few minutes, probably about five, ten minutes. That's, that's about all you need to glue them. So, so have a bunch ready. These, this is another project that I call a survival project. You can do this while you're watching videos. You can do this um, while you're waiting for somebody, you know, you're, you're in the car. Um, as long as you have them pre-glued, uh, they're very easy to work on. And just pinching the ends here. Do some of these beige ones. I've been wanting to do these. And I like to make these flowers in bulk, mass making. Uh, because I use them on a lot of projects and the nice thing about this is if you have them ready ahead of time and in the colors that you use all the time and and the seam binding you use all the time then you know they're going to match your projects um, and you know what it costs to buy these online it, it's expensive to buy them online uh, and then you get them uh, in the mail and you you find out that they don't exactly match the colors that you're working with so this way you have more control on your projects by making them yourself and stockpiling them for a variety of reasons. Whether you want to do tags or you want to make a cluster or maybe you want to start some fancy trims, which we're going to start today too. Now this video falls under my playlist of uh, flowers and, and embellishments um, for junk journals. And uh, as I mentioned about the trims, it will also follow, fall under a, a new playlist called Trims, which we're going to start now. And I'm still going back and forth between the charms and dangles. I have a lot of beautiful flowers that are simple to make that I want to show you. Um, I also have some very uh, intricate flowers that uh, we will learn how to make, but li a little later on. Let's get used to making these simple ones first. And I think that's probably enough to show you. Maybe I'll do another blue one because I want to get the blue ones done too. And uh, we will be starting doing some of the trims now. And then still going back and forth just so I don't bore you. Um, I will go back and forth between the three playlists and possibly another fourth playlist later on. So that we get a little bit of everything and some variety and you don't get sick of me making flowers. Although I don't think you would really get sick of me making flowers, but okay. I'll put those aside for me to work on after and close up my glue wherever my pearl is. Here we go. I do have fancy 
closures that my girlfriend Marie made for me. And I'm sure she's watching these videos going, how come you're not using those nice closures? I do use them. They're just in other bottles, Marie, but this is just the glue that was handy today. So once you've got some of these glued, you may find that there's a few, and it's kind of hard to show you, there's a few little strings pulling off, like it's starting to fray a little bit. I'm just going to take my scissors and snip that off. And I'm going to put this on my two fingers. Now I want you to see that there is a spot sticking out where we glued it. And this would be considered the wrong side of the flower. And this would be considered the seam of the flower, even though it's just done with glue, it's not done with thread. We're calling it the seam. So on working on the wrong side and making sure your thread is knotted and ready to go, I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to put it through the seam part, the seam flap that's sticking up. And this is where you have to watch. You don't hurt yourself or poke yourself because we don't want blood on our flowers. And I'm going to just start to do a very small in and out stitch around the edge of this seam binding. So if you can see where I've started, there's the knot, there's a little piece hanging up. I'll cut that after, but I've gone through the seam itself right into the fabric. And I'm just going to now, this is why I call it my finger flower because I just, uh, go in and out around in doing small stitches in between my two fingers. And that's just so that I don't poke myself. Um, and of course my thread is long. I like to work with long threads, but it sometimes catches up on me. And I just slide it around till I have a bare spot again where it's not stitched. And I just keep going in and out, just a, a running stitch in between my two fingers. Now you will get fast at this. First couple might be a little bit harder to do. And just go in and out. And this time when you get to the other end, you want to make sure that you are ending on the wrong side. Like on this outside edge. I hope that makes sense. And it doesn't even matter. Now I'm getting a little closer to the end here. And your stitches don't have to be perfect as long as they are reasonably small. And it doesn't even matter if you overlap a little tiny bit. Just make sure that you are ending on the outside, this or the, the back side or the wrong side, like not the pretty side. So when you've gotten to the other end, you should have stitches all the way around. And I'm going to do one in blue next, in the darker blue, so you can see it a little bit better. So there's stitches all the way around. And I'm just going to hold it and start to pull. Just gently. It's on my fingers. And I'm just going to gently pull it. Pull it, pull it, pull it. Until it is reasonably tight. And then you can lay it down on your surface, pulling it tight and right away making a knot. Now everybody makes knots differently. I've said that a million times already. It's up to you how you make a knot or maybe you follow somebody else who's taught you how to make a fancy knot. I just, yeah, wing it. <laughs> So once you've got your flower knotted, you can, you can turn it over and just kind of play with it and pinch it and pull it a little bit. Uh, you know, it, at this point, it still looks like a wrinkly mess. You don't really see the flower part of it and you don't want to take your thread or, or cut your needle off the, the flower at this point. Cause coming from the back side, cause that's where we started or ended is you're going to go through the center of the flower 
making sure that you are catching some of the fabric. You don't want to go through the little hole that's still inside there because no matter how, how tight you gather that flower up, there's always going to be a little hole there. But make sure you're going just slightly to the edge of the, the uh, center and pull your thread through so your needle is coming out of the center. And you're going to grab a bead. I only put a few beads out at a time because, um, trust me on this one, if you catch the table or bump it and they land on the floor, you'll never find these again. They go into places that you don't know exists. Um, so I've threaded my, my bead on here and I'm just going to go back through the center, but again, making sure that I'm catching a little bit of the fabric. So you can feel the fabric as you're going through. And of course my thread is nodding up a little bit here, but we'll get it straightened out here in a sec. Sometimes you have to grow an extra finger in order to make these things work, right? And we've all got an extra finger here, there. And then coming back up, I'm going to again feed it off to the center, but as close to the center as possible. And add another pearl on. And these pearls, if you are interested in getting pearls, you, you can pick them up at your local craft store. Very inexpensive. Or online um, at your different sources that you go to. You can also take apart jewelry. Now I'm going to go back in again from the back side. Grabbing a bead and back down into the center of the flower. And that is it. And you've got three pearls in the center and your flower is ready to go. So you just turn it over, knot it off, and cut your thread. All right, so I'm going to do another one. And just knot my thread. And I'm going to start with a pink one. Again, I've got a little piece that's I know it's hard to see pink on a pink hand, but um, I've got a little piece sticking up, so I'm going to just trim that off. Fold my flap down so that it's against the circle itself. And I dropped my needle here somewhere. And starting on the wrong side, going into that fold or that seam, I'm going to start my first spot and then bring it back up again, bring it back out. I hope that makes sense. It's just an in and out stitch, you know, just a running stitch. And I'm going to now start to spread this out a little bit between my fingers. Just makes it easier to work with. And it avoids uh, poking your, your fingers. And yeah, this is a fun project to sit and, you know, it doesn't take a lot of uh, brain matter in order to make these. So you can be multitasking by either waiting for somebody or watching a video, having coffee with a girlfriend. She might get in there and help you make them bring an extra needle. Um, just different you know, it, it, it takes up nothing to throw these in a bag and a little sandwich baggie and pop it in your purse with your needle and thread and a small pair of scissors and you're good to go. You just have to make sure you glue them before you, you know, glue them into the loop before you get, um, package them up to go. It's, it's just a great way to, um, do things without even really paying attention to the time that you could be wasting or, or doing something else, right? Okay, so I've got to the end and I'm just going to overlap slightly going past that first knot and pulling my thread. 
So it looks like a ring on your finger, right? And then now that I've got it completely done all the way around, I'm just going to gently pull the flower or pull the thread, I'm sorry, and form it into a flower. It's kind of like a little cap on your finger by the time you're done. And then laying it flat on the table, pulling it as tight as I can, and knotting my thread. And this is so that the gathers don't come undone while you're trying to stitch it, um, stitch the pearls in the center. Now, if you don't want pearls in the center, I'm just kind of moving this around a little bit. If you don't want pearls in the center, maybe you've got some gems that you could glue down into the center. Easy peasy, that's done. Or another cabochon style, like a big uh, flat backed round one. That's easy done, but I really like the pearls. And maybe you don't want to um, just have them loose like this. Maybe you want to work with them right onto a project that you're going to create with. So instead of uh, starting to put the pearls on, I've got the thread knotted at the back. And I happen to have one here, of course where I'm stitching them onto the lace. Isn't this gorgeous? No, I'm not done yet, but uh, I'm kind of saving about a half a, well, maybe about a length, about two inches in between there. So I'm going to start, I think, here. So I've got my flower and my needle, and I'm going to go through the lace, being careful not to catch it, And now I'm, I've, I've got it on the lace and uh, it's the thread is coming out through the back of the lace and I'm going to, again, go back through the center. Or I could just uh, stitch it a couple of times and like I said, I could, I could glue a cabochon on there or, or a little gemstone. But again, I, I really like the pearls, so I'm going to come up just as if I was doing it without the lace behind. I'm going to add my first pearl. Maybe. You know, they always work so much better when you're not watching, but. Okay, so I've got my first pearl and I'm going to go through the center of the flower, making sure I catch some fabric. And maybe a little bit of the lace. I did pick a piece of the lace where it's a little bit more solid. And I'm stitching this onto here, coming back up through the flower again, through the center, grabbing another pearl, boy, I'm losing it today, there we go. back into the center of the flower. Back up one more time. You could do one pearl. You could do a larger pearl or a larger bead. And back down. So after you've stitched the three beads on through the lace trim you don't have to worry that's stitched on there secure enough and I just turn it over and do my knot the same way as if I was just doing the flower itself now you don't have to stitch them on you can you can glue them on to your lace or trim whatever you're working on
and it's ready to go. So I could I could actually go back and, and glue these flowers on with it. But I really, I like them stitched. So these will, the, the ones that are loose right now will go on other projects. Um, but these ones I will, will stitch on as I go along. And you don't have to stop there. You can add things like buttons. I have um, some buttons here I could stitch on in between. And then your trim starts to get more interesting and you know that this trim is handmade by you. No one is going to have this exact trim unless you, you gift them some of it. Um, but, but your trims get far more interesting and, and delicate and like, wow. And, and if you had to go out and buy this trim, it would cost you a lot more than it does to make it. And you can see there's not a lot to it. It's just these simple little flowers, but you start adding things and it just uh, makes such a difference. Now, some of you may ask, well, what about some leaves? And you can add leaves. You, there, you can make some very small, tiny stitched leaves. You can cut leaves out of felt. Um, you can cut them out of uh, cardstock if you wanted and just tuck them in and glue them. I just happen to have a roll of, um, where did I put that roll? A roll of trim here. Give me a second. Oh, here it is. Not so much stuff is on my desk. I have this roll of trim. It's just a braided trim. And all I did was I, I cut some little pieces of it off. And, and you can cut anything because it's just to give it that little boost of color. And I can either glue or tuck this in un underneath between the flowers and stitch it. And keep going. And you can see that little pop of color. It, it's not even a leaf shape. It's just green. And, and that's really all you need is just a little tuft of ribbon or for, um, felt or cardstock or anything. Well, you, you may not want to use cardstock if you're going to um, put it on, on um, something that might get wet, but, but for the most part, just adding a little bit of green in the background or any color. Your leaves don't have to be green, of course. It depends on what you're making. So just a little bit of tucking underneath and already that's changed quite a bit hasn't it so I will keep going with this trim and eventually show you the finished trim um, off camera or, or once I've done it off camera and so you will get to see this now another thing to show you in this same trim idea I'm just going to move these buttons over but I think I'm going to definitely finish this piece today if you remember uh, making the thumbnail flowers with me, that was these uh, five petal flowers that we had made. When we cut these out, we had lots of scraps left over. And I told you, never throw away your scraps. Add them onto a strip of fabric and start to make some clustery bits. Um, uh, like to make snippet rolls and clusters. So here are some of the ones that I had done um, using those leftover fabrics. Like you can see the blue, um, not on this one, but you can see a little bit of the yellow on here. And these are getting a little squashed because they've been on my desk here a bit. But I made several of these pieces. I'm just moving this over. And... This one, I just used uh, a piece of that brown uh, fabric I was showing you before and some lace trims and the little bits and, and I just cut up pieces. But now I added these daisies on there, but if I want to give it a little bit more of a pop, I can add some of these little mustard colored flowers in there. Maybe some um, coral ones to go with it. Um, 
Like what a difference that makes. Now you can't buy a piece of trim like that unless you're you're prepared to pay the money. But you know, maybe now you're going to go, "Hey, maybe I should make these kinds of trims to sell and um uh, somebody will buy them." Because not everybody watches Kim's channel. So this next one, again, these were all scraps that you would have thrown out. I, I glued down um, the daisies over top and I then I put the butterfly down the center of the daisy. And if I take the same coral and yellow and stitch those onto this piece of snippet, like this would make a really pretty um, belly band or you can cut it into individual clusters with the butterflies in between. Um, and it's it's so easy. Uh, add in some buttons. And then all of a sudden you have this lovely trim that nobody in the world has. Because uh, you're using up scraps. You're using up um, embellishments that you have in your stash. And uh, you know nobody's going to make it exactly the, the same way as you do. Here's another one where the scraps are a little bit more um, noticeable. I have the the blue in here, and I haven't quite finished uh, stitching this down. I just stitched down the center of it. Uh, but again, I can add in some blue flowers with the yellow and um, what a difference that makes in a second. Same flowers on this one, a little bit of blue, yellow, a little bit of blue down there, and oop, upside down. And wow, what a difference, right? So it's endless what you can use these little flowers for. You can make a cluster of three of them just to put on the corner of a page. Um, you can you can use one at a time, although I like to work in threes and fives and and um, making little bits and pieces all over the place. So that's just another option there. And you can still go back and add the green in to make your leaves. Uh, one more thing I wanted to show you is how I, um, where is it here? Here we go. Now this one is that, that uh, seam binding that I was telling you is a little bit thicker. And so all I'm going to do is exactly the same thing. I'm going to stitch it the way I did all the other ones by folding this little um, flap of glued piece down first um, stitch it down going through that you know this has got glue on it so it's a little harder to do right and plus this is a little bit a stiffer of a seam binding and once I get started Now this one I knotted up higher. And going around in and out. Now you, you will be able to tell right away if you've got, if you're working with two different types of seam binding, you'll be able to tell right away that this is a little bit stiffer when you're, when you're working with it, turning it around. Um, another nice thing to think about, you know, some people like I have a huge stash of seam binding almost every color because I buy it all the time. I look for it when I'm out thrifting, um, but not everybody does. So if you're going to have a roll of seam binding, if you're going to invest in a, a 50 or a hundred yard roll or, or any seam binding for that matter, then get a neutral color like uh, white or um, uh, light pink and, and then use your, your inks and your, um, uh, ink sprays and your dyes to uh, change the colors. You can even uh, take a white uh, seam binding and use your felt marker and, and run colors all through it and then uh, spray it with some water and, and watch the colors expand and um, create different colors that way as well. 
So now that I've gone around this, I'm just going to again gently pull it while it's on my fingers. You can see. And pulling it tight, and then I'm going to lay it down on the table here and tie my knot. Okay, so when I go to maneuver this, you can see it's got a little bit of a bowl look to it. It doesn't lay as flat as that one does, although this one also has a bit of a bowling to it. And that's because it's thicker. So there are two things you can do. One, you can leave it like that if you like that style of flower. It's, it's kind of pretty as well. Um, you can layer it on top of another one or use it on the center of a lace flower, which I don't have one handy, sorry. Um, you can use it as a center of a flower. Actually, I'm gonna get one here. I've got these blue ones here. These were some of the ones we made in one of the other videos. So for example, I've got this flower. Isn't that pretty? Um, this can now become the center of that flower and just leave it sticking up like that. Um, and maybe stitch a couple of pearls in there and you're good to go or something a little smaller into the center and what a pretty flower that is. Now you can also take another color, like look at that, isn't that just the cutest? Layer that on top of this one and now we're talking flower, right? Isn't that gorgeous? It's endless. But you know, I always say that for everything I make. Um, with this one, what I would have done is I would have kept it on the needle and stitched it into here with the, the stitching the three pearls into the center. And um, it would all be connected together as one. And then it would really tighten it up and make it lift uh, higher. But going back to this one, you can use it as a little cup type of flower uh, for the center of another project. Maybe this is not the right blue to go with these, these blues, but you know, on a pink flower or a cream colored flower. Um, so you can leave it like that. Uh, it, this is knotted. Um, so what I would do if I wanted it to lay flat is I, I would take my scissors, just being careful not to cut the thread until you know what you're doing with that thread. And I would just cut into this flower, making little tiny snips. I don't know if you can see where I've snipped it there going all the way around the flower and it just um, starts to help it spread out a little bit and and you'll see right away that it's starting to spread out And you can also cut into it a little deeper than what I'm doing if you want the petals to be a little more flat. And the other alternative for this stiff uh, uh, seam binding or, or stiff fabric is of course to wash it to, to remove the sizing from it. But with a little bit of maneuvering, this gives you a whole new look on that same flower. So here it is flattened by cutting all those little edges and here it is curled and here it is flattened where I just uh, did a little tiny bit and I've got the pearls in there. So you can see how that makes a difference if your flower starts to cup up. But again, like I said, the cupping is, is perfect to use for, for the center of other flowers um, so that it, it um, really looks like the center of a flower. So it's entirely up to you. Another thing you may notice um, on some of your flowers, and I just noticed it on this one, but it might be too late for you to see it, is where the seam is, it might, it might have a little bit of a nub sticking up because you may not have joined it perfectly to the other end. Just take your scissors and snip it into a round shape or, or um, just cut off the, the edges so that it's not so so noticeable. And that's just cutting little bits off of it. 
So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope uh, it gives you some ideas and some fun ways to, to play. Now, as a YouTuber, I challenge any other YouTuber out there to make my, my same uh, flowers, show your style, show, show your color combinations, show how you use it on, on projects, because we all do things differently. Um, and you can inspire me right back by showing me something I haven't done, um, using my same techniques. So I hope you've enjoyed this and I hope you will, will, uh, make these and, uh, let me know in your comments below if you, if you liked it. This is my Sunday uh, tutorial and my Monday mask making because after I get off camera I'm going to be making a lot of these and I'm going to be finish the, finishing this trim so maybe later on in the week I will show you what this trim looks like I think I'd like to do a few um, uh, feet of this uh, so so I'm going to keep going for a while but one th other thing that I would like to mention about this trim is that the nice thing about doing each flower and each um, button and each piece of um, leaf individually is that I can cut it here and I know nothing's going to fall apart. I can make it this long and nothing's going to fall apart because you've got everything sewn individually instead of in one long string. So so keep that in mind. Or well, I can show you a couple other things here. Like I can take the same seam binding and stitch these flowers right onto the seam binding so far apart and again it makes a really nice little trim that you can use on your projects so you don't have to just stitch it to lace you can stitch them individually um, you can add those same buttons in between if you like but do stitch everything individually Um, so that you know you can cut it anywhere you want. So that just gives you a few other ideas. But yes, I challenge any YouTuber, link back to my channel and I will link to you. Let's collaborate together and show people other ways of making these or, or other design ideas and and other samples. So um, uh, that's it for today. I um, will be back again on Thursday with my Thrifty Thursday Thrifty Canucks video. Hopefully <laughs> it'll be Thursday. And I have a few other things, uh, projects that I'm working on that I want to show off a little bit. So maybe we'll add that in some way somehow into a, a Friday follow-up or something for Friday. But definitely, you know, it's my Thursday uh, thrift shop and my Sunday tutorials. And then I only add in the others in between between as I feel I can handle it and I'm starting to feel like I've got a kind of a routine going so I'm hoping that I'll, I'll uh, be able to keep that up and um, start being able to make um, more progress on my my massive project that I have here on this desk thank you so much for watching I wish you all a very creative day and a creative week and I look forward to seeing all of you soon and I'm off for now bye for now Hi everyone, just a little follow up on that uh, video. I realized that I was out of camera because I had um, items sitting on uh, the very edge of the table because this this uh, tablecloth had started to slide down. So I don't know that you really got to see this trim when I was showing you the trim with the buttons on it and how I was adding the leaves in. And so I'm just gonna take another piece of this, this uh, green trim and just tuck some underneath these flowers. They're not glued down yet, but just to show you how easy it is to add a little bit of pop with the green under the flowers to make it look like leaves. It doesn't have to really, you can hand make leaves to go on your projects um, and we'll get more into that later on, but really it's it's about the flowers it's not so much about the leaves especially when you're making these trims so just adding a little pop of color and stitching it down the same way you did the flowers just an in and out uh, slip stitch to to hold it all together and then adding the buttons in between is again just another little embellishment enhancement and if everything is done stitched and knotted each piece then it doesn't matter how you cut it you can cut it that long from here to uh 
create a little cluster. You can cut it that long to make a belly band and you can have it longer to, to uh, do edging on a, on a page. And then this piece here was, was just to show you how you can add buttons and, and stagger the flowers in between. And again, stitching each one on individually so that you can cut it no matter where you want it. You can cut it at any length. And it's just stitched onto a piece of ribbon or seam binding that is complementary. And it can look so pretty and, and be another decorative trim that no one else in the world has exactly like yours. Now here I've alternated the colors on a piece of lace. But, you know, you can switch it up and have it where it's just all one color. And you could have it stitched down and sitting. And then when you actually want to use it, you can you can use it for a project as you go along. And then you can fill in in between. So um, it's always nice to have these in abundance in your stash, uh, ready to go. And have some trims ready to go in the colors that you like to work in so that you um, have something unique and different that no one else has. So that's just my little follow-up on because I was out of focus or out of camera when I was showing you the actual trims. So I hope this can make up for it. Um, there will be a follow-up uh, shortly, maybe Friday. We'll see how my, my, my schedule works this week. And I will show you the finished trim once I've done several feet of it, um, as well as a few other things that I'll follow up with on Friday as well. So that's just a little add on to this video. Thanks for stick, sticking around and seeing me to the end here. Have yourself a very great day and a very creative week. Bye for now.